Hello all YouTubers, I am Dwarder Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back in this weather presentation for January 13th, 2020. As always, please consider subscribing as well as watching the whole video. So today, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about a parade of snowstorms that are going to be making their way across the United States. There's going to be actually three that come this week. Okay, one that's going to come through probably in about 6 to 12 hours, one a couple days after that, and then the third very large storm going to come over the weekend. Now, obviously, the third storm, we're not having too much certainty about. The other two, the first two systems, we do have certainty about. So, let's get right into it here. So, before I show you all the models, I'm just going to show you my thinking based off several models, based off of my thinking, you know, based off the temperatures, and all, all those factored in, right? All right, so this is the first disturbance. All right, I'm going to zoom in, too. So, this is from uh, tomorrow morning through Wednesday morning. So, tomorrow morning... It's going to be over here, and Wednesday morning, it's going to be over here, okay? So it's kind of broken into two sections. Now, you see that red number? It says 10, 10 millibars. That's the pressure of the system. That's on average, okay? I think it could get a little bit lower, but on average, it'll be a little bit higher, it'll be a little bit lower. First, it'll be 10, 12, we'll go down to 10, 08, 10, 07, so average is around 10, 10. Okay, this first system is going to be pretty weak. Actually, each storm is going to be stronger. So first is the weakest, the second is stronger, and the third is probably going to be the strongest or at least as strong as the second one. So, it's gonna start, okay, the low center probably be uh, around uh, eastern South Dakota, then uh, Minnesota. We could have some snow towards Minneapolis, maybe mix of rain and snow, Green Bay, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, UP and Michigan, and some maybe some rain showers uh, through Iowa. Uh, Chicago might be a mix of rain and snow between that and rain, okay, but no accumulation for Chicago probably. Uh, even though you kind of are in that pink, you're also like near that green shading. So a little bit of probably like rain and a tad bit of snow mixed in there for Chicago, but no accumulation. But in the northwest suburbs could get an inch or two. Okay, so that's what this pink is. Probably inch or two, localized four inches. But there's two pink areas, one here and one here. Okay, they both mean an inch or two, maybe three. But I think that when it says isolated, <clears throat> locally four inches, the best chance of that happening is in New England, not in the Midwest. So if you're in New England and you're seeing a mix of rain and snow, that'll be your best chance to see four inches. And uh, there's very light blue in uh, parts of the lower part of Michigan, the Great Lakes, flurries, okay? Because the storm is going to come through, it's going to make a sharp turn to the north, okay? And now it helps to bring snow to New England, but not quite Michigan. Okay, New England could see a couple inches out of this too, maybe locally four or five parts of the, you know, Maine over here, a little bit heavier stuff. And also, the best chance of that happening, which five, four or five inches isolated, would be around there as well. Okay, so that is the first disturbance. Now we're going to go sh show the first disturbance on the models. Now we'll get to the second disturbance, and we'll continue so on. I also have some news articles from IQ Weather and the Weather Channel that I'll be showing you as well. So, again, here's the first disturbance. And you can see we got a little tail of uh, decently, you know, decently moderate snow. You see pressure around 10, 12. Like I said, maybe it'll get down to 1009, 1010. Okay, it takes a sharp turn, so Michigan barely got anything, actually. Okay, then we got, and there's New England getting a little bit of snow out of that as well. All right, and the snow is actually not going to be all that much, okay? So, it'll be hour 42. Let's go back and check on the snow totals that the GFS model is pointing out here. 42. And you can see, not much. Okay, maybe, like I said, northern Minnesota, northwest of Wisconsin. That's where we're going to see about four inches of snow, maybe three or four. You'll be lucky if you see that. And also in New England, uh, Vermont, Can Canada, border, maybe two or three inches. Otherwise, it's mainly like one to three for uh, parts of northern New England. So this system is going to be weak. I mean, there's really not going to be all that much to it. <clears throat> so here is the uh, GEM model. And again, here's the first system starting to come together through Minnesota, as you can see right there. 10, 14 millibars of pressure. Okay, so this one has it even weaker. Then maybe a little coastal system developing along with that. But still, New England. New England's going to be in that little bit of you know, snow. Not all too much, though. All right, so that's 48. Let's look at the snow totals for the first system. According to the GEM model. The GEM model has about 4 or 5 inches across north central Minnesota. So the GFS and the GEM do agree on that. But the GEM also puts... Northeastern Iowa in about four inches, and they also have a little bit, about an inch or two more of snow in New England than they do 
with the GFS. But overall, I think they're pretty agreeable. And the third system, okay, you have to really be watching. I'm going to explain this in a, in a little bit while from now. I might want to stay for that because where I am, like in the Mid-Atlantic, they're calling for five to eight inches of snow right now. And some of the models are indicating that as well. So it's going to be a first, you know, big storm for the I-95. Okay, for it's the Mid-Atlantic. I know probably the highest snow that I've seen in one storm this year maybe was an inch and a half or two inches, like at the most. Probably like an inch and a half. I mean, we've seen like a few of the, few storms about an inch. So like I said, total for my area is probably like two to four inches so far this year. Okay, we should probably be past 10 inches by now. So, you know, we're, we're behind, but I think the East is going to be catching up now that the pattern is starting to flip. And why do I say this? Well, if you go to the Climate Prediction Center, and I'm going to be checking on this a lot more often now that it's winter, now that it is the winter time. And here's the North Atlantic Oscillation. It's really simple. The lower, I mean, if you're in the East, the lower this Northern Atlantic Oscillation number is, if you live in the East, the more cold and snow you're going to get. That's why this is a really um, useful tool for the, tool for the winter time. And you can see, we, it's been up beginning of January, and we're starting to come down a little bit. And we're just going to go down more through the middle of January, and then end of January, like I said, all the models are going to start branching out. But we do know for sure that all the models, the ensembles indicate that at least through mid to end January, we're going to be going on a down, down slope. How much? We don't know. Does it bounce back up at the end? Let's hope not. You want some snow, right? All right, so that is the gem model with the first storm. Now let's go to the European model with the first storm. And you can see, look at this, very, very brief. Actually, the, the European and the, gem, and the GFS model both agree on like kind of like a tail, like kind of like, it almost takes the form of a severe thunderstorm kind of line. But it's not me, because it's not going to be severe weather, but it's taking like a nice gust front, a little band of snow. Okay, very brief. Actually, the European model has it missing, missing all of Michigan totally. And maybe some flurries for New England for a few hours. So let's see, you have our 48, see if the, and the Europeans not actually really even too hot on this one either. Yeah, look at this. I see at most three inches for Northern Central Minnesota. So all three models, the GFS, the GEM, and the European call for at least two or three inches for that spot in North Central Minnesota. Okay, it all takes that little band right there and they all agree on that. That same area, they all agree on maybe two to four or five inches. Okay, um, Northwestern Wisconsin, maybe a couple inches, maybe an inch or two, if you're lucky, for uh, New England. Okay, now it's the first system. All right, so let's, all right, now before I show you the models for the second system, let's go to my forecast. All right, so here is the second system. All right, and I'm sorry, okay, I don't, I don't know if I, I, okay, I did zoom in, okay. I'm going to make sure I zoomed in for that one. All right, so this Time frame is going to be Wednesday afternoon to Friday very early in the morning. Okay, and by Friday morning, it's probably just going to be lake effect bands on the back side of the system. The storm system's pressure is going to be average of 10 to 2 millibars, although as the storm is pulling away and it's sitting like right around here, there's going to be, I think the pressure could drop below 1,000 and you're going to see really strong winds on the back side. It's certainly possible. Um, so again, there's a time frame down there and let's uh, zoom in. I should take my face off the screen, but it looks like it's not obscuring all that much. All right, so again, the snow is going to be there across the uh, north central, upper Midwest, maybe Iowa, seeing some rain snow. Chicago, it's another close call for you. Same thing with another system, probably rain and maybe a little bit of snow mixed in there. I could get an inch if you're lucky, uh, but this one's going to be a lot of rain, not a lot of rain, but mostly rain. Across for the like the lower portion of the Midwest and uh, you know, coastal Northeast and the Mid Atlantic. Okay, again, this is going to be another system for New England. And New England could even see more than half a foot locally. Um, the models GFS and GEM both indicate that there's going to be a band right there that forms in it, and the, that kind of shape that has about six, seven, eight inches in it. So that's certainly possible. Okay, and if you can read that, that's the dark blue means heavy snow, maybe five to eight isolated ten. Okay, that medium shade of blue is two to five, maybe locally six, but some areas in that medium shade of blue could see an inch, okay? But just a general guide. Okay, rain and snow is in that pink, and you can see one to four, in one to four inches, but possibly five, and uh, green is rain up to an inch, maybe an inch and a half, but the rain will be, the precipitation will be more enhanced and heavy with the system, second system as opposed to the first one, not to mention lake effect snow behind it could tack on the total for a place like New York. And Vermont. Okay, now that I showed you 
my forecast for the second storm. Let's go to the second storm on the models now. All right, so again, there's our first storm with the GFS model. This is, by the way. All right, so it comes with low from the south and low from the south. You can see not much is tied to it. I mean, it's really broken up. Maybe some rain showers down here and, you know, maybe some snow showers up there. But that doesn't look like it's part of the low. It looks very scattered. Pressure is 1013, very weak. <clears throat> it does start to get its act together, though. This is Wednesday afternoon. Okay, snow is getting close to Chicago. Now Michigan might get, you know, a little bit of snow from the system. Then you see by uh, Wednesday night, we're dropping to 1010, 10, 1009 millibars. So the storm is definitely starting to strengthen. Okay, then it heads to New England. And this is going to be not a blockbuster, but definitely some heavy snow as possible for New England. As the pressure drops another 5 to 6 millibars as it heads into New England, the precipitation expands. We do have some scattered uh, rain showers and thunderstorms down to the south. <clears throat> and that's actually a part of a stalled front. That's just going to be sitting there for most of the week, or at least a good portion of the week. And you can see there's more rain developing in the south, and you got the other system. But look at this. I mean, not Bombo Genesis, but look at this. Here's by Thursday morning, okay, 8 o'clock, and we dropped another 5 millibars down to 1001. This one's really getting going. Then look at this, 991. We see really heavy snow in that magenta. Okay, dark blue is really heavy, but when you get the magenta, it's like astronomical. Okay, then you got these tightly packed isobars on the back side, so lake effect snow will be a predominant threat. Okay, across parts of the Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. And the storm really gets going, it really gets deepened. So, hour 72. Alright, let's go. Now, keep in mind, what I'm about to show you is going to be the combined snowfall from both systems. So, both the first disturbance I showed you and the second one, this is our combined snowfall total from the two storms so far. So it looks like the leaders here are northern New York and Maine. Like I said, about uh, 5 to 8 inches with locally 10. Okay, and possibly maybe a little bit more, but we're, we're going to have to see. And depends on how strong that system gets. But okay, 3 to 5 inches here, 3 to 5 inches here in uh, northern Wisconsin. Even northern Michigan started to catch up with 3 to 5 inches too. Anywhere in that dark blue, it's almost like a, close to a whitish color. That's like your 3 to 5, 3 to 6 inches. And then that magenta is like 5 to 8, a little bit higher maybe. Okay, <clears throat> again, that's combined total from both systems. So maybe, you know, you know, there's 5 to 8 inches for New England. Probably maybe 2 to 4 came from one system and maybe like an inch or 2 came from the other one. It is possible. All right. So here's a GDPS model, basically the CMC. It's like the Canadian model equivalent. All right, so that's the first system. All right, here's the second system. So the second system starts out with some rain and snow for Iowa. And actually, did I? I did zoom in for that one too. I want to make sure for each of my drawings, I zoom in so you guys can see it better. All right, so here again, here's some snow through North Dakota, through Minnesota, and central Iowa through northern Illinois. could see more of a freezing rain threat, a rain-snow mix. Again, look at Chicago. I mean, it's just so close. We're just not quite getting it. I mean, the low is just too close to Chicago. It's too far north. Again, there's just snow, a little bit heavier snow down towards Madison, Wisconsin, parts of southern uh, Wisconsin. And then look at this. The low quickly strengthens. I mean, this is by 2 a.m. Thursday. You got a low pressure of 1,000 millibars, which is pretty strong. Probably has some 40, 50 mile an hour winds. And the rain will be there across the mid-Atlantic. <clears throat> Combined with that stalled front that's seen draped across the south. Bring some rain. 996, 986. So they're really making the storm a lot stronger. And you can see there's a lot more lake effect snow, too. This storm looks very well wrapped up. And uh, let's see, 84 hours now. All right, so remember, like I said, with the GFS, the snowfall totals I'm about to show you are going to be combined of both storms. And point of the gem model, combine both storms. We have a few spots like the New York Canada border, the Vermont Canada border, as well as uh, just near Bangor, Maine, and uh, um, parts of Halifax, Nova Scotia. You can see a flood of snow combined with these two little disturbance, weak disturbances. The first one's weak, the second one's going to be... The second disturbance that comes in uh, Wednesday, Thursday will be pretty weak, but it's going to really... I mean, it's going to be weak as it mo moves across the Great Lakes and the, then the Northeast starts strengthening. Then it really starts wrapping up when it gets off the coast of Maine, into like the Gulf of Maine. So <clears throat> that'll be something to watch. But like I said, maybe five or six inches for northern Minnesota, northern Iowa, maybe four or five inches. That is certainly possible. All right, and just before we move on to the third system, which I'll really get into deep detail about, and that's what our that's what my news articles from the Weather Channel and the AccuWeather are about. Let's get into the European model real quick first with the second storm. 
All right, so again, here's the low and more freezing rain. Places like Iowa could could rack up maybe a tenth of an inch, quarter of an inch is certainly possible, but it's going to be very quick, very quick hitting. All right, and then it moves across Great Lakes, 10.02, 999 millibars. So we're starting to kick in those high winds and the lake effect snow is already starting. Then 988, and it's off this map, but probably pressures into the 970s. But the, low, the center of the low is off the map, so you can't quite see. And the lake effect snow will be there as well. Okay, so let's see, hour 84. Again, one more time, I'll reiterate again. The snowfall total from both systems. And I'd say the European snowfall totals from both systems is right between the GFS and the GEM. Okay, GFS being the lower, GEM being higher. I think the European's right in between. Maybe like 8 to 10 inches <coughs> across portions of northern New England, with again 3 to 5 inches from much of the parts of the northern Great Lakes from both systems. All right, and let's get into the third system now. Now, this will be the really interesting one. Now, this storm is going to be very, very interesting because it's going to, the snow could get pretty far south. Even if you live in Virginia, North Carolina, Kentucky, Eastern Tennessee, you have the chance to pick up at least some snowflakes or maybe even an inch or two of snow. But again, that could all change. So this storm is going to be from Friday morning. It'll start out out right over here. Actually, it's a little bit... A little bit too far east. So probably start out over in here. Friday night it moves here, and then Saturday, Sunday it's in the northeast. All right, Sunday actually will probably be moving out, and we're going to get lake effect snow on the back side of it. Now, let's look at these area blue. Now, like I said, I'm not putting totals on this. I mean, I did put totals, but they're very wide. I didn't put totals on there yet because I didn't really. The storm is very far out. Okay. Originally, it was gonna, in my area, it was going to start Friday night. Now, it's not going to start till Saturday. And again, the forecast is about 5 to 8 inches right now. But in the northern Great Lakes, northern New England, you could pick up more than a foot to a foot and a half. So, it's going to be a very major winter storm. It's going to be our J-name storm. And again, this will last through very early Monday, but I don't even think it'll probably be done by then. Anywhere in the dark blue, you have a chance to see moderate to heavy snow. Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, Great Lakes, Southern Plains, or at least the Central Plains. And moderate snow would be like four or three would be light. But four, five, six, seven, that's kind of like your moderate range. And your eight to 18 plus would be like your heavy range. So again, it's a very wide total. But you have a chance, at least a possibility in that dark blue, to see moderate to heavy snow from this weekend disturbance. Okay, and in the pink, now again, this could move around. The pink could go up here. The pink could go down there. But one thing we are very confident about, or at least a lot more confident about than we are with the snow, is going to be the rain. Okay, about one to three inches of rain in the south, it is cut off by the camera. Isolated totals could be four to five. I don't think it'll quite get to five, though, but a couple areas could see four inches. But definitely certain about the rain in the south. What we're not concerned about, or what we're not um, certain about in the south, is where that rain and rain snow line is. Maybe the pink goes a little bit farther south. But we are certain that if you do get rain in the south, you're going to get about an inch to three inches. It's just the matter is where do we get that rain snow line to get a little bit farther south. Otherwise, the pink and the blue could very well change. Actually, I think it will change across the parts of the northeast. So again, the pink moderate to heavy rain snow mix is possible, one to six inches. Okay. Like if you stay rain longer and a brief period of snow, it's going to be an inch. But if you're like... You know, half and half, you know, snow and rain, maybe three inches. And then maybe if you're all snow and ending is a little, or starting out as rain and ending is a lot of snow, then maybe five or six. It all depends. And right, now let's, let's hit the models now with the third system. Now the GFS. All right, very interesting here. We start out 10.04 and this storm's where we're gonna, really going to be a blockbuster. Okay, and the latest run is... You know, staying the same as the last one, although I kind of like the last run better, at least for more snow. But you can see very heavy... St Oops. I hate when those ads pop up. All right, sorry about that. Let's go. That's where we're. So, let's talk text and data. Oh, yes. Can you just go away? Thank you. And we have very heavy snow going across the mid-Atlantic and the parts of the Great Lakes. We're already down to 1,000 millibars, but just look how large the storm is. The ice lines really expand out. You really got to really have a large system here. But where there's not heavy snow, there's heavy rain. And that is the case across parts of eastern Kentucky down through Tennessee. And the storm 
Oh, like, why not too far? It's going to move across northeast in through Sunday. By Sunday morning, in the afternoon, we get leftover snow showers. But like I said, by Monday, it's gone. So 156. Let's look at the... I'm just saying the hour number so I know where to remember to put it. All right, so here's the snowfall totals. Now, for some of you, like in northern New England and northern Great Lakes, this will be the total from all three systems. But parts of the mid-Atlantic, this will be your total just from this system because you didn't see snow from the other two systems. So basically, from all three storms, how much snow do we have, according to the GFS? Parts of eastern Maine, I forget there was a town that looked, I think, oh, it's called Bering, Maine, because I was saying earlier today and I couldn't remember. But basically, this is where US-1 starts. It goes all the way down to Florida. But basically, right where US-1 starts around Bering, Maine, two feet of snow is possible from all three systems. So that looks to be your leader, at least across the east, because like the west is like, oh my gosh, 77, 80 inches. That's crazy. Ah, uh, come on. Come on, go away. Go away. Uh, all right, sorry about that. But parts of, like, let's say, northeastern Maryland, northern Delaware, eastern Pennsylvania, six to eight inches, certainly possible. Okay, northern New Jersey, maybe seven inches. Maybe parts of northern New York, like near Watertown, maybe 17 to 20. <laughs> it's it's going to be a lot of snow, and you can see... We got, you know, inch, two inches of snow going all the way down to the Carolinas and at least a trace of snow going down to almost South Carolina. And we got our, you know, a few inches across portions of the Great Lakes. But from all three systems, Chicago, you may only get, at least according to the GFS model, you may only get an inch in downtown Chicago from all three systems. But you go just west of town, according to the GFS model, you can have five inches. So it makes all the difference. Uh, but also across, you know, the upper Midwest, maybe good. 10 to 12 inches. Now I said GFS model, all three storm disturbances. Now through about Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Now let's go to the third system, GTPS. Here's first, there's second, and here comes the third. And initially when the storm first erupts, we got a really heavy snow across to Iowa. Like I said, the pressure is already down to 1004. So the lower that pressure, higher the snowfall totals are gonna be. Look, we're down to 998 already. Snow goes all the way up into Canada, sears down into the parts of the mid-Atlantic. We got some sleet and freezing rain for places like DC already. Like I said, the I-95 actually, who knows? Philly might even see more snow than Boston. It all depends on the storm track, the way it goes. Because like the low's going all the way up into Boston, so Boston's probably going over the rain. Philly may not. It may just go snow to like a brief period of rain and it's done. So a lot of areas along the coastal mid-Atlantic, coastal northeast, maybe even parts of the interior northeast, all depending on the storm track, might go over the rain briefly. Okay, but as, lo if, as long as it goes over the rain and the temperatures stay 34 degrees and it's raining, the snow won't melt all that much. Okay, because I know some, some storms, it depends on the atmospheric dynamics. I've been in situations before where we had a storm come through, it was snowing at 39 degrees. Other times, a storm comes through, it's 34 degrees and it's raining. So it all depends on the atmospheric dynamics. But if it's raining and there's snow on the ground, you want to go sledding, don't freak out. As long as the temperatures are hovering near freezing or above freezing and it around 33, 34, and it's raining, don't freak out. The snow's going to still stay for a little while. But if you get snow and the temperatures go up to 50 degrees and it starts raining, you might want to start worrying about the snow melting. So, again, it all depends on the atmospheric dynamics. But again, by Monday, this storm should be out of here. Besides some lake effect snow, this storm is done by then. So, again, this is, this is about five days out, maybe six days out. So, still got a while to prepare for this, to analyze the models more. But they look pretty similar. Um, I'd say the gem puts a little bit more snow in northern New England, combining all three systems. Um, but actually puts less snow for places like Virginia, Carolinas, nothing. Actually, and they also, but they also have a lot more snow for Chicago. The GFS had an inch, and the Canadian has like nine or ten. So the models disagreeing in some spots, but really agreeing in others. Like, like, like for example, northeastern Maryland, eastern Pennsylvania, northern Delaware. Six to eight inches, kind of like what the GFS was saying. And also they agree on the northern upper Midwest here, probably seeing about a good six to ten inches maybe. All right, before we get into the uh, news articles and a brief humidity map, let's look at the European model with the third system. Okay, let's actually skip to see how it's looking. There we go. So this storm really starts getting together. Okay, this is Saturday at 2 o'clock in the morning. 10.02 millibars. This storm looks really wound up. Some really heavy snow for Chicago, but if you look real close, actually, you want to look real close? Let's uh, zoom in for a little bit there. If you look real close for Chicago, they're right on the line. 
It's like f heavy freezing rain. Then right over downtown Chicago, it's a little bit of sleet, and then snows right there. So it's it's a it's like southern downtown Chicago is freezing rain. The center center of downtown Chicago is sleet, and northern downtown Chicago is snow. It's really interesting. It's like right on the cusp of everything. It's like all three types of precipitation. That's really interesting. All right, and uh, let's zoom out the oxide at ninety percent. There we go. All right, so this storm is going to continue to move, and Okay, bands could start coming into the Mid-Atlantic Northeast Saturday, uh, maybe late morning into early afternoon. And then, maybe brief flip over to rain for parts of the southern Mid-Atlantic. And again, this thing is out of here. By the time you wake up Monday, let's see, 8 o'clock, nothing but a few leftover lake effect snow showers. And there'll probably be flurries, because they'll all be gone by then as well. It'll be Mostly snowing will be overnight if you're talking about the lake effect snow. But the European model puts a little bit more snow... For South Central Maine, closer to Portland, maybe about 25 inches. But again, that town, Barry, Maine, where US-1 starts, maybe about 22 inches. Now let's see if I'm right. Yeah, 21, 22. Oh, there's 22. Okay, but so drop it off the snow for I-95 quarter a little bit, but we'll have to see what it looks like tomorrow when you wake up. Because like I said, I-95 quarter could be the dividing line. North of there, we got a foot of snow. Closer to the coast, we got nothing. So, But I think the I-95 has a good shot, or at least a possibility seeing a few inches or more but the european puts a lot more snow through the northern parts of the great lakes and also putting chicago from all three systems same thing as the gem they're putting it in about nine ten inches real quick let's look at the humidity map okay i want to actually show just for the, the weekend storm okay and this is when the snow is going to be moving across the mid-atlantic when all that snow starts to fill in pfs model look at all the relative humidity we have in place we got the moisture now, of course, the dew points are going to be low, okay? I get it. It's winter time. The dew points are going to be down 20, which is pretty dry. The relative humidity is how close is the dew point to the temperature. If you have a temperature of 25 and a dew point of 25, it seems dry, but your relative humidity is going to be 100%. The closer together the temperature and the dew point is, the higher your relative humidity values are going to be. And these are measured in percent, so the darkest green is 99, 100% relative humidity. There you go. You learned something new today. Hopefully. Look at the dynamics of the storm. Look, here's 985 millibars right there. This is Sunday morning. Okay, you got a huge comma. It's like a whale's mouth or a comma, whatever. And you got a little tail precipitation or at least humid air. And you got humid air wrapping all the way around. But look at this fierce dry air that comes in after it. And you can tell it's going to be cold because here's the high pressure sending in some more northern, chilly, or northern and chilly air. So this storm looks really like wrapped up and really impressive. All right, weather channel real quick. Let's wrap it up here and with AccuWeather. Again, the exact track of the storm is going to go across like this, but we don't really know that yet. It could change. Snow, ice, and rain, it will be determined. Okay, so Thursday moves into the central plains. But the west, it could rack up a couple feet in the higher terrain. But parts of Seattle and Portland could even see an inch or two of snow and ground level. But you want to see snow in Seattle and Portland go up about 600 feet plus, and you'll see some snow. Friday, it starts to move into the northern plains. So the Weather Channel is saying Chicago is like, like, what are you talking about? We're nowhere near the rain snow line. That's all the way down here. Purple is sleet. We got that for Cincinnati, down towards Peoria, maybe, uh, just south of Des Moines. But Kansas City, St. Louis, you're in that freezing rain. That's ice. Everywhere south of that, Tulsa, Little Rock, Nashville, Paducah, you're in the rain for now saturday cincinnati might go over the rain and we got snow or at least a rain snow mix for richmond washington baltimore as well wilmington philly probably in a, probably like all snow or at least briefly mixing and the same thing for new york boston's gonna be snow and again we're not just quite certain yet chicago is still in the snow but like why are the models calling for like you know not much i mean it's the gfs wasn't having too much faith in chicago i feel bad for you but down the spine of the Appalachian Mountains, you could have some ice close to the, just uh, northeast of Asheville. Okay, again, I was watching on, tele uh, on television, like Xfinity, I believe it's Channel 55, if you want to watch it. Verizon now, I mean, at least I have 611, so. I mean, it all, it, all, it all depends. But they briefly showed the totals, and it looked like about a few, inch, or a few inches for Mid-Atlantic, maybe a foot and a half for the Northeast. It all kind of depends. All right, so AccuWeather, okay, last graphic here. 
Snow going through Detroit, maybe a little bit of rain still mixed for Pittsburgh, for D.C., not quite yet. It's not until Saturday where things really start winding up. We got some snow, some snow and ice, and some rain. Pittsburgh, New York, Boston, all the way through Toronto. So, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and Ecuador hasn't put any totals on there yet. Again, this is gonna, this is not gonna happen for another five or six days, so we still got time. I just saw, like, a week ago, or two weeks ago, actually, probably, no, a week ago, I was just looking at the weather forecast on the Weather Channel app, and I come across a thing that says three to five inches of snow Friday night. And, of course, I just get too excited, and he usually never comes, and here we are tracking this. So, hopefully, stays, forecast stays good, we can get a nice six inches for all in the mid-atlantic and south and the northeast so please consider subscribing please watch the whole video if you share it with your friends tell them to do so thank you for watching i'm the weather dude signing off till next time thank you for watching